the Oklahoma Sooners softball team. Have you ever heard of them? Swung on and deep to left field. It is back. It is gone. We are tied. I mean, come on. If you look at that last home run, these girls were down by three runs with two outs and two strikes on that batter. The odds are nearly impossible, but you can never count the Sooners out. This year, the Oklahoma Sooners won their third national championship in a row. Yes, you heard me right, in a row, which makes them the first college softball program to ever accomplish this task. Their record this year was a whopping 61-1, and and yes, the only loss came during their preseason, and they crushed an all-time sports record of holding a 53-game win streak during their season after that one loss. I mean, look at these kinds of plays. This defense is incredible. And you know what they say, defense wins championships. Oh, hey, that's me. Yep, I was a shortstop for this team. This was my final season. I was team captain, so what a way to go out. Love this team, and to play with these kinds of studs is a dream come true. But what I'm even more thankful for is to know that these gals are my friends for life. We were such a talented team, but what I hold really close to my heart is that we played for something more than softball. This interview happened back in June 2023, just a few days before we won the national championship. This was nearly five months ago, and me sitting in that hot seat, I was given the question, but I had no time to prepare. So I'm gonna watch it through, gonna react to the awesome comments that my teammates made, and just share some more insight and what was meant by these answers. So let's start with the question given by the ESPN guy. He had no idea what type of answer was coming next. All this dude wanted was some insight into the OU softball team on how he kept winning and how he actually kept enjoying what we were doing. Think about any other area in life. If you keep doing something well over and over, how do you keep that joy? And he asked the softball team this question, not knowing what was gonna happen. Start with ESPN for, for the players. I know you talked about keeping the joy of the game, but I'm curious. It's a long season, right? And you guys have had the target on your back the entire time, the win streak being number one. How do you handle the unique pressure that comes with that? How do you keep the joy for so long when anxiety seems like a thing that could very easily set in? I actually remember at this moment, if you look at my face hearing the question, a lot was going through my brain on how I wanted to answer this because he was setting it up. There's some questions that, you know, they gear it towards what type of answer that they want to hear, but God was using this question to allow us the opportunity to share what he was doing through our team. Honestly, I didn't have anything prepared specifically to say. All I knew that I needed to point this question and answer to God. So let's hear what I said first. Well, the only way that you can have a joy that doesn't fade away is from the Lord. And Woo! I didn't even know I was going to say that, but true joy comes from the Lord. One of my favorite verses in high school, Philippians 4, verse 4, says, Rejoice always, I will say it again, rejoice. This means no matter what, we have a reason to have joy because that joy comes from God. If God tells us to rejoice always no matter what, then that goes against anything that the world says. The world says good things happen so you have a reason to be happy about them. Bad things happen, man, we can get down on it. But God ultimately tells us to rejoice no matter what. In all things, we have a reason to rejoice. And so in softball, this game, as we explain, the game has so much failure, but in the midst of that failure, we can have joy. And any other type of joy is actually happiness that comes from circumstances and outcomes. And um, I think Coach has said this before, but. Joy from the Lord is really the only thing that can keep you motivated, um, uh, just in a good mindset, uh, no matter the outcomes. Thankfully, we've had a lot of success this year, but if it was the other way around, uh, joy from the Lord is the only thing that can keep you embracing those memories, moments, friendships, and all of that. So uh, I would, that's really the only, the only answer to that because there's no other way that softball can bring you that um, because of how much failure comes in it and just how much of a roller coaster the game can be. Yeah, I remember thinking my answer to that saying, well, even if we didn't win, we would still have joy. And, and as an athlete, it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around that because you want things to go well and you don't really picture them not going well because you want to be optimistic. But 
I can genuinely tell you that we believe that no matter what would happen, God was in control and he knew what was going to happen before that. So it was really cool to share that to remind people watching, whether they're athletes or non-athletes, that no matter what happens, we can trust that God's in control and that allows us to just be joyful no matter the circumstance. And it's always important to be reasonable about the sport that we play. It's a game of failure, like I said. And so even in that failure, you have to find little things to rejoice over. I struck out a lot the World Series. There's some good pitchers that are there, but big picture, I can rejoice over the small things of teammates doing well, even when I'm not, or me finding little successes even in the midst of a big failure. That gives me so many reasons to rejoice than what the world says to rejoice over, which is just wins. These next two answers are incredible. Jada and Brito shared some awesome wisdom that I even go back and watch so that I can learn and grow from that. But let's hear what they have to say. 1000% agree with Grace Lyons. Um, I went through that my freshman year. I, I was so happy to win the call. I've talked about this before, but I was just so happy that we won the college world series, but I didn't feel joy. I didn't have, I didn't know what to do the next day. I didn't know what to do for that following week. I didn't feel filled. Isn't that crazy to hear that someone who wins the World Series, think about it. The World Series is the best of the best in college softball. And Jada Coleman, who in my opinion is one of the best softball players to ever play, is saying that she didn't feel what she wanted to feel after winning the World Series. That's crazy, but I can agree with her because I actually won three national championships throughout my career and the feeling after winning is nothing compared to this joy that Jade is about to share. And I had to find Christ in that and I think that is what makes our team so strong is that we're not afraid to lose because if it's not the end of the world if we do lose. Yes, obviously we've worked our butts off to be here and we want to win, but it's not the end of the world because our life is in Christ and that's all that matters. That's a mic drop statement right there. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, then nothing else matters. God wants us to be right with him so that he can put purpose in our life to grow closer to him. But like Jada's saying, when she was a freshman, she didn't have her life rooted in Christ. And so she didn't feel anything after that win. And now seeing Jada in her senior year this year, so much growth has happened and God has used her, one, to be successful at the highest level, but to also point others to him because she has a firsthand testimony of how only God can fill her with the joy in such a successful time of her life. You know when they say, save the best for last? That's what happened with Alyssa Brito. I love her wisdom she shared with this eternal perspective that this is not our home and ultimately we're trying to glorify the Lord with how we play and keeping our eyes up. Yeah, um, I think a huge thing that we've really just latched onto is eyes up. Boom, there she said it, eyes up and she'll get a little bit into what that means, but Colossians 3 talks about keeping your eyes fixed on things above, not on earthly things. And you guys see us doing this and pointing up, but we're really like fixing our eyes on Christ. And that's something where, like they were saying, you can't find a fulfillment in an outcome, whether it's good or bad. And um, I think that's why we're so steady in what we do and, and our love for each other and our love for the game, because we know this game is giving us the opportunity to glorify God. That, that's such an amazing perspective, realizing that this game isn't just for you to win and to achieve the best accolades you can. The purpose of playing softball is so much bigger than just what you can do on that dirt. And it was so cool to see a team on fire for that and all on mission, realizing that softball was not our identity. It's something that we did and we had a chance to glorify God with. And um, I just think once we figured that out and that was our purpose and everyone was all in with that. I just wanna note that not everyone on our team was a Christian. Most of us were, and there were some that maybe didn't understand uh, this perspective that we were giving. But big picture, the message we were trying to portray is what happens on the field does not define you. But it was cool to see our team rally around the concept of keeping our eyes up. Um, it's really changed so much for us. And I mean, I know myself, I, I've seen so much of a growth in myself with um, once I turned to Jesus and I realized how he had changed my outlook on life, not just softball, but understanding how much I have to live for, and that's living to 
exemplify the kingdom. I'm so proud of Brito and just seeing her grow into this godly woman that she is. Just like Jada, she came into her personal relationship with Jesus in college at around 20 years old. And so I'm just so proud of her for taking a stance and being so bold on this platform that she has. And I think that brings so much freedom. And I'm sure everyone's story is similar, but we all have those great testimonies that have really like shown how awesome it is to play for something bigger. Um, and I think that's just what brings me so much joy. And no matter the outcome, whether we get a trophy in the end or not, we're, this isn't our home. And I think that's what's amazing about it is we have so much more. We have an eternity of joy with our father. And I'm so excited about that. And yes, I live in the moment, but I know this isn't my home. And this girl's talking about eternity. We're not just living for now. This girl is saying, this is not our home. We have so much more to look forward to with God in heaven forever. This makes me want to be so intentional with what I do each day. If I'm having an eternal perspective, seeing how I can best know God and strengthen my relationship with him, then everything I do on this earth has purpose and meaning. I need to speak intentionally. I need to act intentionally. I need to read the Bible and continue to grow. And I need to treat others in a loving way that will bring others into a relationship with God. So everything we do matters, but it's for an eternal perspective, like Brito's saying. Um, no matter what, my sisters in Christ will be there with me in the end um, when we're with our, our King, so. Praise God. Me, Brito, Jada, we're gonna be in heaven together rejoicing with God because we have put our faith in Jesus alone. That's the only name that can save, Jesus Christ. Nothing that we do can earn a better standing in heaven or in God's eyes. It's only by the blood of Christ. And that's why Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is so important and impactful. He died to take on our punishment. And then with that, God offers us grace in the forgiveness of our sins so that we are no longer bound to the sins that we've committed. Those have been washed away by the blood of Jesus and we have freedom and new life in Christ. We are competitive athletes on the softball field, but these girls share how important it is to have our faith rooted in Christ. And then once you've been saved by Jesus, that gives you the ability to go and play with your eyes fixed on things above so that the rocky times and the failures don't affect you to where you're discouraged and you lose joy. Joy from the Lord is a consistent thing that we are filled with. It's a fruit of the spirit. And we see God working in us, filling us with joy, even in the times that maybe it doesn't make sense. Patty, uh, you've got to keep your eye on the prize. I, I forgot about that point that just happened. Let's, let's rewind that and watch that again. Patty, uh, you've got to keep your eye on the prize. Look at those fist bumps. Jada gives Brito a fist bump. She goes and gives me a fist bump. We are so happy for the opportunity we had to share our faith and share the gospel with others. That deserved a little fist bump action. And then another one of my favorite moments is this last frame where it zooms in on Coach Gasso just smiling and realizing the impact that she has made on her players and just hearing her players talk about this with joy. I know that it encourages her and uh, she is a strong woman of God. So she may not have answered this question, but I know that she agrees with each and every one of us and uh, she is smiling on the inside just as she is on the outside. Man, when I think back to the World Series, I am going to remember this interview for the rest of my life. These are the moments that I prayed for. When I came into college, I didn't know what to expect, but as God grew me through college, he gave me the perspective to realize that it's about these moments, not just the wins on the field. It's about the opportunities you have to tell others about him and what he's done in your life. And so I love this question and the fact that we have the freedom to answer that in the way that is true, the only answer to where we get our joy. I'm so proud of my team for being bold with me and each of us being able to share a little tidbit of why God is so much better than anything on this earth. This right here is how you boast about the Lord.